For years, there's been buzzing that Beyonce is overrated. And for years, the Beehive has stung back with Sasha Fierce clapbacks, and instead of being thanked, we've been called brainwashed and, de- and delusional, which is so... Defense is useless. So instead, I welcome you. Welcome, welcome to the, the Renaissance. Renaissance. I don't think they ready. When Beyonce said you are the visual, she meant that literally. This is some shit we've never seen before, y'all. If you weren't really looking specifically and strategically for this, you wouldn't have found that. Y'all didn't get that? A lot of people didn't. These references span over a thousand years. She's referencing the actual renaissance. The actual renaissance. The actual renaissance! Hey ho ho, homeboy and homies, welcome and or welcome back to my cor- We gonna start this video off right. To my corner of the internet, a corner where pop culture meets critical thought and medium ghetto antics. If this is your first time ever seeing my face, my name is Herbie. Herbie Rivalis. My pronouns are he, she, him, her, hers, and hers. And yes, that does mean that I wear pants, skirts, pearls, and purses. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for arriving when you did, how you did, and as fast as you could. I know you jetted over here, baby. Why wouldn't you? There is not going to be a more in-depth review of the Renaissance Tour than that. It don't get no higher than this, so buckle up, buttercup. I know that's right. So buckle up, buttercup. Are you guys enjoying the new-ish views here? We've got a couple of disco balls going in celebration of the renaissance. The renovation of this set is due to, in large part, a very secret, secret thing that I've got coming up for you all in October. Buckle up, buttercup. And if you want early tea on that, go ahead and come on over to the page we are. Now listen. Today's video is going to be a breakdown and an analysis of one of the most conceptually intricate shows I've ever seen. The Renaissance World Tour, and and even more interesting than that, the culturally rich and historically dense visuals in between the live performances. I want to address as well some of the angry girls, boys, theys, and gays in the back due to the drama that has gone on in this tour. But for this video, I really wanna stick to the analysis. There's so much here and I don't want to miss a beat. So I'm doing this in two parts. Part one today and part two tomorrow. It is going to be a live in which you and I engage with each other. We talk about some of my act two theories and I think that they're pretty fucking solid. Um, And we really run through some of the drama that has been circling around this tour. But again, y'all know where y'all know where y'all can find that live it'll be patriot exclusive link in the bio now i've done enough filibustering let's begin with why you bitches ain't fucking with the queen world stop okay i just want to before i say anything um with respect to why y'all ain't fucking with her can i say that can i say that i was quoted in esquire as you guys may or may not have known, because you do or do not follow me on Instagram, <laughs> what is your problem? Do you not like me or something? I've been to two Beyonce concerts, and the first one that I went to was in um, New Jersey at MetLife Stadium, in which I was interviewed. I actually ended up being quoted in an article for Esquire as her closing statement, and the article was written by Bria McNeil and titled, Beyonce's Renaissance is Her Greatest Achievement. She says... On my way home, looking at my notes from that night, I found a few words from a conversation with a kind man named Herbie. I'm sweet! I met him earlier that night and complimented his outfit, a sparkly silver number that Beyonce would surely approve of. What do you love about Beyonce? I asked. She represents the dichotomy of being a human person with limits, but she feels limitless, he said. That inspires me. I said that! That was me! I remember that! I remember that. I remember the interview. Shout out to you, Bria McNeil. Thank you so, so much. Um, And thank you for using my quote to close out your article. All right, now that I'm done gagging, let's talk about why I decided to name this video Stop the Stan Wars. Beyonce's one of one. This is in large part due to the consistent misogynistic and honestly just intellectually dishonest comparison of Beyonce the performer or Beyonce's renaissance tour to anyone on tour currently, anyone on tour in the past, just please don't. Honestly, don't compare, there's about three people I can think of that Beyonce should be compared to. And even those people, please don't bring them up in the comments. 
I don't want to have to lay. Okay, I want to respect everybody's artistry coming up, everybody doing their thing right now, and everyone who's done their thing in the past. You know what I'm saying? You can do you. You can do you. But I just am unsure that people are doing them at the level that Beyonce is doing her. Let this video serve as a greatly detailed reminder that no one can think like B. The show is twisted, intricate, and where perfection is her standard, she contradicts it. Visuals literally curated to hypnotize you and keep you addicted. So sure, there have been people who have been incredible performers, spectacular even. And many may argue, you know, maybe there was greater vocalists than that of Beyonce. Sorry, that was a lie on my lip. I licked it. Beyonce's unique. <laughs> and well, the Renaissance tour is, yeah, you guessed it. Too classy to be touched. <laughs> Let's talk about why. The day is July 29th, 2023. Exactly one year after the release of the Renaissance album. And the time is 9.09. One hour and nine minutes after the scheduled start time of one of the greatest nights of my life. One of the greatest shows. I would ever see. And the RGB screen, which is actually an LGBTQ progressive pride flag screen that sat still for an anxiety inducing two hours begins to shift. Naturally, the crowd's innocuous rumbling swell into an intentional and collective roar and anticipation for the thing that we've been waiting for all night. Beyonce, a billow of smoke builds as she ascends onto the stage and finally addresses the crowd. New York, New Jersey. I love you. The piano begins, and before I know it, my breath is made slave, serving only to exhale between the bliss of the stadium's bass and the words of her words. Baby, I love you. You are my life. Dangerously in love. Dangerously in love, a timeless and declarative romantic anthem. It reverberates around the room, and I am breathtaking. After all, my breath is but a slave. <laughs> and somehow, even after three children, seven albums, over 500 live shows, and 25 years, Beyonce's voice is not only incredibly captivating, but even more scintillating to bear witness to in real life. Mike is on. Piping out. I mean, just listen. Audio up, children. Audio up. Bitch is eating, eating, eating. The barrage of ballads continues. Flaws and all, one plus one, I care. And it's so interesting because Beyonce, who has long been a person who is interested in curating a holistic show, right? One with equal parts dance, spectacle, and live vocal performance, who's also been criticized for being too much of a performer and not enough of a vocalist has intentionally made the decision to open up the show night after night after 25 years of singing live with her most vocally challenging and difficult songs and does them with ease or at least makes it appear that way. And of course, how could I not mention how she incorporates some of the most memorable moments of the night where she pays homage to the great of Mary J. Blige and then the, and the phenomenal and the spectacular late great tina turner okay and speaking of paying homage let me tell you something if for nothing else beyonce's rendition of i'm going down is why i need the live version of this uh, this tour absolutely a hundred percent without a shadow of a doubt the power right the vocal agility needed to transition from slowly slowly, slowly girl to girl let me play it let me play it because my voice don't do it justice i mean you know i got a little one too but beyonce please do you And then to just sit there so damn busty. 
Oh, okay. okay. It's just crazy, right? So shortly thereafter, she tiptoes over to the center of the stage to say, I want to get a little bit closer to y'all. Is that all right? Bitch, you know that's all right. You know that's all right. Actually, that is, that is my, my deepest dream. So she moves to the center of the stage and she begins to sing I Care and she engages the audience as she picks up the mic and puts it around, you know, to the whole stadium and, and allows us to sing. It's your turn. Y'all know, y'all know how she do. It's your turn. Girl, I'm, I'm like, well, I care. Girl, I'm singing like the lights are being turned off tonight and rent is due. And the thing about I Care is she only gets better and better at performing that live. Has anybody noticed that? Like Homecoming was my favorite version of i care it still kind of is my favorite version live version of i care when i listen to i care in the studio you know the studio version immaculate immaculate but it just gets better and better even as her voice gets deeper and richer jesus 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 and she does all of this while engaging the crowd while smiling and you know giving us personality in ways that she doesn't typically do giving us these fag hag expressions and things y'all are eating these looks tonight beyonce how oh, dare y'all look so good i can tell y'all planned these outfits some months ago y'all got up at eight o'clock to get ready Y'all look good. It's just too damn much. And it's clear to me, and I think it may be clear to you as well, that we're not getting the typical Beyonce performance, right? It's clear from her engagement with us that we're not even getting the typical Beyonce, right? One that is hyper fixated on perfection and technique above all else. No, 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 no. We're getting a Beyonce focused on talent, for sure. Duh. But experience and awe and making space for the beauty of imperfection. And, and I think there's a, there's a may, if I find a clip, I'll include it here where she was like, this is not a show about perfection. This is about letting go, being free. And I'm like, oh, release your job. Release your job. It's the only thing that keeps coming across my mouth. I, I genuinely feel like that feeling of release was her aim for this tour. And my God, did she supersede that? And just before she leaves the stage for her first outfit change, which that's an important moment in the show. That is followed by some really provocative and interesting imagery and visuals because it's followed by some really interesting and provocative imagery that is influenced by literature, artwork, and fashion that spans over a thousand years. Now we're gonna get into that in just a moment, but let's stay where we are right here before she leaves the stage, right? To give us so much more. She does a rendition of Tina Turner's River Deep Mountain High, which is kind of like a deep cut for Tina Turner, right? Um, and I think that that was intentional. First of all, we're going for a more intimate moment between Beyonce and the audience, right? That's why she opens up with ballads. She added that selection May 29th after the untimely passing of Tina Turner as a celebration of that queen. And honestly, I live for that. Beyonce reminds us, if you're a fan of me, you're a fan of Tina Turner. It's so true. It is so true. And when, I, and when I'm watching Tina and I'm watching B, I'm like, oh, Beyonce is so deeply inspired and influenced by. So she eats and then she disappears into the stage. And this is where some of the most interesting moments happen. This is where things, I think, begin to heat up, confuse, and intrigue many of the audiences, many of the audience members, because the visuals begin. <laughs> And I don't know about you, but this deposits in me a question. What is the story of this show? Where are these quotes and these narrations and these images being pulled from? How does dystopian, futuristic alien imagery connect to the actual Renaissance era of the 14th century? Because it is connecting. How does she do that? Why is she doing that? Beyonce, what are you doing here? And if Beyonce is an apprentice of art history and image making the way that I think she is, if she understands what it means to consistently hold herself in proximity to opulence, regency, and the Renaissance as a black woman, and essentially redefining it because of the body that she lives in, then she certainly understands the importance of this story via image making, certainly. So firstly, before I get into the nitty gritty and get deep on y'all ass and, you know, put on my tinfoil hat in ways that some people may agree with and some people may not. It is art. So tell me your thoughts as I say my things. But before I 
say the things i want to give a huge shout out to bay z hive on aka the beehive theoretician on twitter for providing me some really well thought out and what looks like really researched theories and honestly potential answers to the curiosities birthed by beyonce's art so in order for you to really understand what Beyonce is getting at here, you really have to not you don't have to be a student of Beyonce, but you do have to be aware of Beyonce's pattern of holding herself or positioning herself in proximity to, you know, African Orishas, Roman deities, Grecian deities. Beyonce has a history of doing that. And also she has a fascination with um, dystopian imagery we're gonna we're gonna get into it but this kind of ethereal storytelling in particular is one of beyonce's favorite things she loves to position herself as a goddess darling and you know what i respect it as a black woman do you so the visuals that precede beyonce's opening number is the welcome to the renaissance visuals right and so in those visuals beyonce says i close my eyes and travel through realms of space and time gravity holds no power or control over my state of mind i close my eyes And Beyonce says this as she's presented sleeping in her normal human form. Now, if you'll remember, because all of this shit is connected, okay? If you'll remember, Beyonce, and I'm, and I'm reading this so that I make sure that I'm not missing any of the good stuff, because I want to make, it's a lot of moving pieces, and we need to make sure we're following all of the things. You get what I'm saying? You get me? So, if you'll remember Beyonce's British Vogue cover right after the album, where she wore an area um, gilded winged headpiece, right? And so, honestly... That shoot was really responsible for giving fans an idea of not only how to dress for the concert and the tour, but also the thematic experience the tour was going to provide. But that's neither here nor there. Let's take a task. The wings on her head then and throughout the imagery in the visuals are meant to signify the wings of the Greek gods Morpheus and Hypnos, the gods of dream and sleep. Now, I don't know what you know about Morpheus. Might be, it might be giving you a little bit of a Matrix moment, and it is a Matrix moment. <laughs> we'll get into that a little bit later as well. So Morpheus in Greco-Roman tradition used his wings to carry messages to people through their dreams, right? And so as Beyonce is speaking about traveling through space and time, right? She's transitioning into a futuristic chrome angel, right? She's transitioning into Morpheus, a futuristic sexy robot Morpheus. And that's all gonna make sense a little bit later in the video, but it's clear that Beyonce is trying to place us in her dream. She's using the screen to take us into her dream or she's creating the dream and then becoming Morpheus to deliver us a message. My money is on the latter over the former. Now, the key theme in these visuals throughout the show are mind control, AI, and the dichotomy between human and robot. And that's an idea that Beyonce has been toying with for a while. I can't quite figure out if Beyonce is saying here when mind control comes across the screen, right? That she is attempting to mind control us? No, I don't really think so. Or that there is some larger force, this invisible, powerful third party that already has us under mind control. My money is on the second though. And I say that because she presents these Renaissance red, white, and blue pills with like Renaissance songs written all across the pills on the screen, right? And obviously red, white, and blue is the United States colors, but the red and the blue are very reminiscent of what? Morpheus from the Matrix, right? And how we can either opt into reality or opt into the delusion, the dream, the state of hypnosis mind control and i think it's very interesting that beyonce opts to add the white right and and do it in the shape of the american flag because there is an argument to be made there is a case to be made that beyonce is saying that we are being mind controlled by the institution of america right so not just america as a country who operates with like a business right so it has particular business objectives but also as a cultural republic symbol for white supremacist patriarchy and racism for which it stands 
<laughs> you get what I'm saying? But also the idea of using the pills may not just be a reference to Morpheus and the Matrix, but it may also be speaking to the rising opioid epidemic, the rising addiction epidemic, and how that keeps us in a state of consistent hypnosis, collective hypnosis. These addictions are a form of mind control. And then shortly thereafter, <laughs> this is just too much. And then shortly thereafter on the screen, there's an, there's imagery that shows whoever controls the media controls the mind, right? And so immediately I'm like, oh, Beyonce is saying that she's that girl. She's about to control the media. Gag, bitches! Girl, weak analysis and I won't allow it. Girl, that's weak analysis. No, if the theme is consistent, and if what I'm thinking is the reality, then Beyonce is saying that the institution of America owns the media, which makes complete sense, right? Because America is not just a superpower because of its militia. America is a superpower because of its grip on media, right? And owning the largest media institutions in the world, social media or social media companies, news media companies, streaming services are all run through America. And he who controls the media controls the mind. What are they trying to get through to us? Beyonce is not in the Illuminati, you see. She's trying to free us from the Illuminati. <laughs> Think about it. And what are the keys to freedom? The Renaissance album. Duh. The Renaissance album is an album about freedom. It's celebrating love of every kind. It is celebrating joy, but specifically black joy, because where there is black joy, joy should be experienced by all. If the most oppressed among us experience joy, then joy should be able to be experienced by all, if you understand what I'm saying. And so this album is a celebration of that, Tati. Now we're going to get into what, what happens when Beyonce comes up back to the stage and her dream is over. But we're also introduced in these visuals for the first time to Beyonce juxtaposing herself or positioning herself as Venus, a Greco-Roman goddess whose powers um, are but are not limited to immortality, shape-shifting, divine beauty, sensuality, fertility, um, the ability to change the course of a battle and transfiguring humans. Yep, that sounds like that's Beyonce's resume. Actually, Venus, are you Beyonce? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> um, and then obviously later in the show, she comes in a similar Venus-styled, now famous, heated cat suit, right? But let's not get ahead of ourselves, even though both are hot references to venus <laughs> the birth of venus specifically let us not get ahead of ourselves now can i put on my tinfoil hat is it okay is this a safe space okay i'm putting on my tinfoil hat <laughs> now that's more like it it's almost like beyonce is using these artistic representations to associate black folk and blackness with these images that are already associated with opulence and godlike esteem and the pleasures and fantasies associated with that there's an old expression, don't swim upstream, right? Which is essentially saying, work with what people know in order to make a change or a difference. Now, conversely, it can be argued that Audre Lorde ate when she said, you cannot destroy the master's house using the master's tools. Mother ate that. She really, really did. But let's focus on one school of thought here. <laughs> if you're Beyonce and women's empowerment and black liberation are part of your vision for the future. It's not just about policy and legislation. It's about the empowerment of the spirit. It's about shifting people's spirit and collective response to black folk. And if you are obsessed with opulence and regency and regality and divinity, deity, then you want black people to be as closely associated with that as possible. And so you use the images that people already associate with those things and get an ensemble cast of overwhelmingly black and brown women and queer folk to be the representations and the bodies that hold those ethereal images. It's a very good way of saying what you have deemed high art, what you have deemed sumptuous imagery and deity is actually black women. <laughs> it's me, baby. You don't see? The Renaissance era's art was held in high regard because of its philosophical basis and its celestial connectedness to divinity. And so Beyonce is seating herself next to that kind of power, that kind of prestige. And like I said, is getting an ensemble cast, hired an ensemble cast of black women and black queer folk to help bring that vision to fruition. You can't tell me that that is not planned out.
You can't tell me that now I've had enough. Let's get back to our regular schedule programming because it's getting a little bit spooky in here. Would you agree? Now, Beyonce returns to the stage and she's ushered in by, sure, the voice of the Renaissance World Tour, but also the voice of Ballroom, the iconic, the legendary Kevin Jay-Z prodigy. Oh, this is what I want to say. Now, this moment may be where real Beehive fans may start to see some parallels in this concert to other Beyonce concerts, or even not even real Beehive fans. People may be like, I've seen this before on BET in 2007. So as Kevin JC Prodigy is doing his thing to bring Beyonce in, Beyonce, as you saw, and as you can see here somewhere on the screen, is in this robotic number where she's bussing out, right? And it's very reminiscent of her 2007 robotic situation. Like I said, Beyonce has a kind of fascination with this kind of image making. Um, and so it's reminiscent of that. And why is it reminiscent of that? I want to be specific. So in 2007 at the BET Awards, Beyonce was referencing Fritz Lang's 1927 movie Metropolis. Now, what's interesting about the movie Metropolis and my little bit of research around it, right? Not only is it a hundred years old, right? Um, and it still holds some sort of value and it's still informing art that's like when you study shit and you start walking things back by people who are really talented you realize a couple of things what you're whatever you're looking at it is not new the my parents used to say and a lot of old people my family used to always say there is nothing new under the sun there is nothing new under the sun everything is informed by something and, and i'm always i always say this good artists borrow great artists steal beyonce took from this movie and made it her own but that's okay let I me mean, that's the her there let's talk about metropolis for a moment what's interesting about Me metropolis the movie is it was criticized by marxists i mean and, which is not really that shocking because beyonce is often criticized by marxists and socialists right for being a hyper capitalist but it was criticized because people argue that it advances the provocative thesis that revolutionary violence actually serves the self-interest of the ruling class so basically that revolution that you thought you were going to rise up right that violent revolution that was going to change everything let's do the revolution and then we'll eat the rich it's not going to work for you beloved because all they're going to do is use those ashes to build new houses and to feed you dust feed you dust is essentially um the takeaway of that movie <laughs> oh shit. you know i don't live for that but then in 2009, Beyonce does something similar to that where she wore a Mugler Fashion Week 1995 robot suit that com where she was talking ad nauseum about how she was overworked and she was just doing the next thing and the next thing and the next thing and operating like a machine, but she is not a robot. I landed and did a show and I had three shows in a row and then my day off, I had to go into the studio. Yesterday was another show. It's as soon as I got off of the stage, I had to get on the train. I didn't get here until one in the morning. It was nine days without resting my voice and my body and my mind. And, and not being a robot is something that Beyonce wants to continually remind us, right? I think, I th I, now I'm going to be honest with you. As a kid, I used to be like, Beyonce can't be real. But those kind of things are dangerous to say, right? To dehumanize anyone, but in particular black women because of the history of dehumanization per with respect to their bodies and what their bodies can do, won't do, will do, et cetera, um, is very, very, very dangerous. And so even now, as she's referencing herself again in the Renaissance tour, although this look eats every single look ever she's ever done, right? Um, this robot look that she's doing now is inspired by, and don't fight me in the comments if I say this wrong, is it Hajim Shorayama? Hajim Soryama, her sexy robot. She comes out in that, but just before that, I believe, there's a picture of her as a kid. The it, She's verifying that I am not a robot. I am not a robot is verifying. I'm not sure if I'm not a robot actually checks and says, ding, you're good. She's not a robot. So that would be interesting. I, want, I have to go back and watch that. But this is just such a layered text. It's so brilliant. And you know you're truly outside. You've, you've ascended from iconic status when you can reference yourself and do it even better. You've ascended into legend, legend stat. You've ascended into legend stat. So here we are 
ushered officially into Beyonce's futuristic dream. It is this dystopian, postmodern capitalism nightmare or dream. It depends on your vantage point. Um, but it's clear she's trying to create her messages here, right? This is the world. This is the message that she, as Morpheus, is bringing to us, right? She starts with, I'm that girl, cozy and alien superstar, which basically says people should be comfortable in their skit cozy, People should just be allowed to be who they are. Um, we should do things in a different, unique, specific black way. And really what she wants us to understand here, and this is one of my favorite parts um, conceptually of the show, is that time is not real. Time is not real. It could not be conceptualized, really, except that it is predictable. Follow me. Um, she uses a quote by Neil deGrasse where he says, time makes us a prisoner to the present. Time is defined to make motion look simple. I also think of time as this prison. But what I find particularly interesting about this quote is what enables us to define time is that it repeats itself in perpetuity. And we revolve around the sun. So that took really long to figure out, disturbingly long. I mean, only like 400 years ago when... So what it tells you is that you can keep track of time even though you have no freaking idea <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> because all that matters to you is that things repeat. Yeah. If you have something that repeats predictably, you, then you have created a timekeeping mechanism. So in essence, as she's taking us through this really nuanced, complex, multiplex, multiverse, right, journey, where it spans, the vision of this show spans over a thousand years. She can do so because the message she's conveying is timeless. Because time is nothing if not predictable. This bitch is clairvoyant. This bitch just declared herself as clairvoyant! And y'all was asleep. Well, that's how she wanted you to be, sleep. <laughs> so then she performs a couple of numbers. She gets into the things and she leaves the stage again, right? Not to say that those weren't really, really good moments, but there's a bit more analysis that I'm saving for a different video where I'm going to be talking about. I'm not going to say it just yet. I'm not going to say what that video is, but if you're watching in the future, it's in the description box and I'll put it up. I'll put the time card up right here, right now. That video is going to be a moment. So there's some things that I am intentionally leaving out because I'm saving it for a different video, but Beyonce leaves the stage and we get even more interesting visuals. Now, before I continue with my analysis, I want to say if you are still watching, comment justice for freakum dress. I don't think I have to explain myself here. I think it makes complete sense. We needed the fault when she said, now pass me my dress. Anyway, Beyonce returns and she performs what feels like it's everyone's favorite song in the stadium from the eruption. Cuff it up. Woo! Baby, let me tell you something. I literally felt the ground shake. I am not kidding you. I felt the ground shake and that was just from the like interlude vocals. That was before the song, the instrumentation actually started. You know where she goes. fuck her up so cuff it happens and then there's energy which has become my and i think so many people's unexpected favorite part of the show to witness and it is so great to be in the stadium like look around everybody on mute look around it's me and my crew yes i enjoyed that immensely it is you know as i and it's one of my favorite things to watch now online to see are you bitches gonna mute the way you should be muting Thanks. Um, Break My Soul, both the original version and the Queen Mix, and then Formation with the iconic wide brim hat. Now, both the Queen Mix and the wide brim hat have caused quite a stir with respect to Lizzo, Lizzo's controversy, Beyonce's stance, um, Beyonce's ethics in the matter and um, Erica Badu. Now, I'm not talking about that here on public on the public stage. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. And y'all just got to understand that. Y'all got to respect that. Okay? That is going behind the paywall on the Patreon live version that we are doing tomorrow night. 
respect that please respect that now Beyonce disappears again very briefly and then we get some of the most memorable parts of the show where Blue Ivy comes out and you know we get the Black Parade performance my power I love that um but also before I let go and love on top some of my favorite moments from this particular section of the show um and I love particularly for black parade and my power that there is a american flag painted with pan-african colors i love it i'm a sucker for a powerful moment and i'm also um a sucker for when beyonce chooses to engage the crowd in a way where it's like all right not only is it your turn but we're gonna sing this together okay you then me let's go i need your help i want to feel your energy like at that point i'm like here's what i have Bitch, I'm finna bell. Are you ready? Um, <laughs> are you ready? Um, and so Love on Top and Before I Let Go provide exactly that. They feel like community moments. It feels like communion. It feels like a family reunion. It feels like a buttermilk biscuit on a Sunday morning. It feels good, 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 good. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. At this point, I'm just getting my life and having a good time. Now, the final parts of the show are upon us. And Beyonce gives us some of our favorite songs from the latter part of the show. I'll say this. Beyonce deserved an Olympic gold medal for the way she darted across that stage to engage the crowd. If you were lucky enough to happen to be in ATL the last night ah, of her ATL run, f*** you. I'm not taking it back. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. What I actually meant to say is, I don't give a fuck if nice things happen to you. They should have happened to me. And I'm not happy for you. Yeah. That's actually what I meant to say. <laughs> no, but seriously, y'all finally got y'all justice for thick and even more impressive. Y'all got the Dubai version of Drunken Love. Bitch, when I say jealous, anyway... What was most fascinating for me about this part of the show is Beyonce's headpiece stopped working. So she couldn't hear, right? And the level of professionalism, talent, and technique that that showed up, she could not hear. She still gave, ah, ah. Beyonce, bitch, ah. And you can't hear and you can't hear let me tell you something that is crazy that is crazy that woman is crazy i was about to say that woman is not human that woman is human give her her humanity okay and so now i gotta wrap this up because i gotta go i gotta edit this sock of post this um <laughs> we end the show um obviously we end the show with summer renaissance a round of applause um but just before that we are introduced to the house of renaissance and all I have to say is what a celebration of queerness, of the ballroom scene, um, of the ballroom scene currently, right? Like how it is right now, the sex siren scene, the body scene, um, the girl face category, like shout out to Darius, shout out to the girl who did the sex siren, I don't know your name, but if I find it, I'll put it on the screen. My big, beautiful, dark skinned sister who gave me body, gave me face, gave me energy, gave me <laughs> She gave me sex. Mm. I'm sorry. I don't usually get like this about a woman, but you ate it. Ate it. Ate it. Ate it. Ate it. Y'all ate it. And also shout out to Honey Balenciaga. I know Miss Balenciaga is getting a lot of hate because people feel like she's getting a disproportionate amount of representation um, and praise with uh, as compared to the black the black people are part of the show but you know what i'll say is when a bitch is eating it she's eating it and honey eats it the fuck up every time if she was mediocre i'd be like okay girl dig her digging her butt digging her anal canal girl girl digging her anal canal but one thing honey is gonna do is eat it eat it Mm, yummy, 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 make that bummy heated. I gotta be honest about that, okay? 
I lived, I got my life. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I got to experience that not once but twice. I'm so grateful to be alive at this time. And I'm so grateful that I got an opportunity to break this down with y'all. Thank you guys for your support. Thank you for continually showing up. There's been so many people showing up as of late. And it almost gets me a little bit emotional. I'm so, so, so grateful for you guys. Thank you. Um, and yeah. You know, it's only up from here. There's so much coming. Like I said, there's something unique coming up in October that I'm really, really excited to launch. And I hope that y'all rock with that as much as y'all rock with this. If you want the sneak peeks of the things that are coming, join the Patreon. If you want to be a part of the conversation and engage with me deeper and more intricately about the, you know, whole Beyonce accountable portion of the show. Join me on Patreon And if you are watching this in the future Join still I know it's going to be messy Heated And intellectually stimulating I will talk to you guys later I love you too too bad But before I let you go You know I will never leave you without saying this I am in a constant state of practice And so are you You can never fail When you're in a constant state of practice I love you Too bad Mwah. Bow wolf. <laughs>